about the recording of earthquake uh, i'll quickly go through this early history that this was the very first attempt to detect and record an earthquake 136 ad this chinese man invented that first ever seismoscope and it was simply a metallic vessel like this which is having um, uh, these you know holders for balls and these are metallic balls here which are carried by these metallic dragons and here you have some other things which can just simply uh, catch that metallic ball and he said that uh, accuracy of those uh, size of those balls and size of that holding chamber and everything that any small vibration of that vessel will result in dropping that ball and a ringing sound will produce when the ball is dropped down and which can detect a, a ground shaking right so at that time actually no one took him serious but later uh, uh, this equipment was able to record an earthquake which was not even felt by 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 the people there right so therefore uh, i mean there was a real earthquake no one recorded uh, experienced that earthquake but this equipment showed that ringing sound and everything and then he arranged those dragons such that he can also give an idea about the direction of movement right so uh, this equipment was able to detect that earthquake and later after 3 days that news came that there was a very destructive earthquake in some other area and some small vibrations also reached to his town also so then the uh, the ruler of that whole area called him and then he asked him to make more of these kind of devices so in different cities they installed this vessel to record the earthquake or detect the earthquake right so this is the very first seismoscope but uh, nowadays uh, we have uh, more sophisticated seismographs and the basic idea is that uh, we can somehow detach the movement of earth with the movement of a recording pen or recorder right so the very first uh, of these kinds of seismographs was developed by john mill in around 1880s and uh, he used the mechanical principle of inertia uh, to just get that thing done recording of a real earthquake right so he used a simple pendulum and uh, that pendulum mass was attached with a pen which can write on a paper a rolling paper right so uh, he set the time period of that time uh, that pendulum such that it was that long time period that any movement uh, will not transfer to the to the mass and mass may remain still right so this is a depiction of this idea that if you have a long period uh, you can say single pendulum or single degree of freedom this is a long period simple pendulum and this is a short period simple pendulum right under the same earthquake uh, the short period may move with the ground right because when you shake and that shaking is also short period so therefore you may not be able to detach the movement of that ball with the movement of ground but as you increase the time period of that single pendulum the difference between the time period of shaking and the time period of the simple pendulum will increase right and eventually a time will come uh, at a particular time period of that single pendulum that the ball will completely remain still since you have already gone through the the structural dynamics course so i am more comfortable in explaining just imagine that d dynamic amplification factor it was like this right so it start from quasi static range then resonant range and then finally inertial range and in the inertial range if you go more and more uh, you can say in in the frequency uh, range you will eventually get a very small d right so which means that uh, if by making a long period pendulum you can uh, detach the movement of the mass with the movement of the assembly or movement of the ground right so you can simply achieve this kind of thing on the right and attach a pen 
and then uh, a paper can be used a rolling drum paper can be used to record the actual ground movement right so it means that each seismometer have its own time period also right which is the time period of that pendulum inside that and that time period should be very high currently uh, using the smart materials we are able to develop uh, the the seismic monitoring stations which can have a time period more than 100 seconds right so it is not possible physically to make a pendulum because if you work out the length required to make a pendulum which have a time period of 100 seconds it will be very long right so using smart materials and uh, different uh, you can say uh, new technologies we are able to develop such an such a device which uh, give us a very long time period like 100 second right and that is compacted in just one small cylinder right so that one small cylinder is equivalent of a pendulum having a time period of 100 second or 150 second maybe so this is the basic idea on the right hand side of recording the acceleration time history or ground displacement this is the schematic of john milne's original device instead of pendulum he actually used the mass attached to a spring but same thing sim single degree of freedom idea so if you have vertical acceleration or vertical movement you can go with this assembly but if you have horizontal then you can go for this assembly nowadays we have an we have the uh, seismographs available which can record directly in three perpendicular components so one equipment can, reco can record in three perpendicular axis acceleration right this is john mills original device uh, so modern seismographs as i have explained they still are based on the same idea of pendulum but now we have more smart materials uh, by by controlling the electrical signal in them we can control their stiffnesses which means we can control their time periods right so we can develop a pendulum of 100 second time period within an assembly of like very small assembly of few centimeters right so modern seismographs look like this short period seismograph again they can be classified based on their own time periods right so you can have a seismograph having a its own time period of one second now imagine that you install this kind of a seismograph in on ground and the shaking itself have a time period of one second this seismograph will not be able to record that shaking because it it will oscillate with this with that shaking right it will not be able to detach that um, mo um, the motion of the ball with the motion of ground right so on the other extreme we have broadband seismographs mm. which have uh, which can have a natural time period as much as 120 second so we use short period seismographs for some specific purpose for example uh, recording very high frequency vibrations caused by explosions or some other man made phenomena for example right so if the actual frequency of shaking is uh, very high which means the actual time period of shaking is very low actual time period of the shaking let me call it t bar if it is 0 0.001 second or 0 0.001 second okay then the difference between t bar and t n of the equipment is still very high 0 0.001 and 1 second so which means that this kind of an uh, seismograph will be able to record very high frequency shakings like uh, caused by explosion or any other you can say activity uh, the the earthquake actually the naturally occurring tectonic earthquakes have a frequency range of 0 0.2 hertz to maybe 7 hertz or 10 hertz maximum right this is you can convert into an equivalent time period right by taking reciprocal so this is the range of uh, frequencies or time periods of those signals which are generally included in a random looking earthquake signal right so this kind of a short period seismograph is not good for recording earthquakes right because it the difference between the earthquake movement frequencies and its own natural frequency is not much right uh, but broadband seismograph 
will be able to record such an earthquake right because it have a very long time period or very low frequency right so generally an uh, a recording station or uh, seismograph seismometer actually uh, is able to record uh, a motion which has a time period more than its own time period right sorry less than its own time period frequency more than its own natural frequency so uh, it means that uh, seismographs are not only for recording earthquakes they are for some other applications also right one category is for earthquakes which are broadband seismographs uh, this is an illustration telling us that different kinds of seismographs have a different threshold value above which they can record an acceleration so for example if i go on y axis we have the peak ground acceleration the minimum peak ground acceleration which a particular type of uh, seismometer can record and on x axis we have the uh, the period itself in seconds right so we have a high frequency seismometer shown here by this orange dark orange color they have a very low threshold value they can record in a very low uh, you can say uh, very low pgs can be recorded right but their frequency range in which they work is also very narrow right for broadband seismometer or very broadband seismometer which are shown here by the shaded area in white color they have a very low pga value which can be recorded but at the same time their frequency range or time period range which can be covered by these seismometers are also very wide right so earthquake actually occur in this range so therefore you can see that different organizations have installed different uh, seismometers which are in this range right there is another category called low gain seismometers but their minimum threshold which can be recorded is uh, not very small it is they they actually start from this level above right so there you can say uh, minimum acceleration recordable acceleration is not that low so we have different international organizations which have their global seismographic networks gsn is one of them so they also have a station recording recording station in in pakistan in nilore its data is uh, openly available freely available in real time so you can assess uh, that data uh, actually download it in at different time and durations and then process it yourself so there was a time when we used to record uh, displacement of ground but nowadays we have that technology to directly record the ground acceleration right because that is more meaningful for us we can directly get an idea about the forces produced by that earthquake inertial forces produced by that earthquake if we get the ground acceleration all we need to do is simply multiply it with mass and these are the effective earthquake forces so i'll skip that detail also you know that that ground acceleration can be multiplied with mass and it can be converted into uh, forces now uh, i'll discuss about uh, intensity and magnitude uh, by the way this illustration tells us that from the same earthquake with a, with an epicenter located here different recording uh, at different distances are shown here on the map right so in general you have that trend that as you are going away from epicenter the peak amplitude peak ground acceleration is reducing but sometimes you may find that uh, you have a lower peak ground acceleration at a closer distance compared to uh, a, a distance larger than that right so this will be the effect of local ground which can amplify or deamplify the ground shaking 